Hello everyone, welcome to the Things Conference. I am Manikanta from CyberEye, joining the conference from India. Hope you are all safe, excited and having a great learning from the conference. We are equally excited to be part of the conference and to share our insights on migration from V2 to V3 in this session. Before we get started, here is a brief about our company. At CyberEye, we are a team of 100 plus people and are powered by IB Hubs. We work on solving challenges in critical sectors of the government and industry. We develop and provide solutions in cybersecurity and IoT. We are preferred partner for the Things Industries in India, member of LoRa Alliance and authorized design partner for Microchip. We are also the initiator of the Things Conference India. Diving into today's topic, we have all witnessed the Things Network. It has been phenomenal in building a global IoT network. It facilitated wide adoption of LoRaWAN across various sectors and helped people across the world in building industrial grade solutions. The Things Network is now upgrading to the Things Stack V3. Today, in this workshop, we are going to learn how to migrate from TTN V2 to TTN V3. The Things Stack is an enterprise grade open source LoRaWAN network server suitable for large, global, and geo distributed public and private networks as well as smaller networks. This project is actively maintained by the Things Industries. It comes with many added features. For example, it extends support for all the LoRaWAN versions. For more information, you can attend Getting Started with the Things Stack sessions from the conference and check the documentation. The URL to the documentation is thethingsindustries.com slash docs. Now let us take a look at the documentation. Here you can see that the documentation is categorized into getting started, devices, gateways, integrations and more. Scrolling down you can also look at the features supported by the Think stacks and the distributions that it supports over here. Feel free to go through uh, this guide to know which deployment is right for you. Let us get back. Talking about the suggested approach for migration, it is recommended to know the major changes in V3 from V2. Let me show you the guide that document these changes. Click on getting started. Select migrating to the things stack guide. Over here you can see the major changes in the things stack. Feel free to go through this before you start migration. Let us get back. Next to that, as a first step, we recommend to migrate a single device to the Think stack. Avoid migrating production workloads before you are certain that they will work as expected. Finally, once you are confident that your devices are working properly, migrate the rest of your devices and gateways to the Think stack in batches. We shall demonstrate migrating a single device in a while. A couple of important notes regarding migration. Migration from TTN V2 to TTN V3 is one way, which means you can't migrate devices back to V2. Also, it is crucial that devices are handled by one network server at a time. That is, having session keys present on both network servers is not recommended. In such a case, you, you would most likely encounter uplink or downlink traffic issues. So the default migration process clears both the root keys and the session keys from V2 as you export these devices. Here are the prerequisites for the migration, an account on v2, an account on v3 and the LoRaWAN stack migrate tool. Let us take a look at them one by one. Firstly, go to your account on v2. For example, here is my account already logged in. Here is my application and here is my gateway that are active. Next, you need to register for an account on V3 console. Here is the link to access V3 console eu1.cloud.thethings.network. This is the login page. You can log in with the Things ID. The landing page of V3 is pretty similar to V2 console. Let us get back to this later. The next step is to install the LoRaWAN stack migrate tool. This can be found on the Things Network GitHub repository. Here it is. Using this tool, you can easily migrate devices and applications from V2 to V3. 
This tool also supports migration from other networks to the thing stack. You can take a look at the readme here. The binaries for the download are available in this link. You can go through the assets and download the binaries relevant for your OS. For this demonstration, I am using a Mac and I have pre-downloaded the binaries. Here is the tool ready to uh, help us with the migration. Coming to the migration procedure, it is a simple two-step process. Step 1 includes exporting the device details from V2 into a JSON file. This is done using the LoRaWAN stack migrate tool. And step 2 is importing the devices in V3 using the JSON file from step 1. This can be done from V3 console. Now let us start with migrating a device. I have a things you know with me here. Which is registered on my V2 console. It is actively sending uplinks with sample humidity and temperature data. So we shall be migrating this device from V2 to V3 console. So as discussed, the first step would be to export the device details into a JSON file. To do that, let us configure a few variables. The first one is the app ID. You can copy paste the app ID from the console. The second one is the app access key. You can get it from the application over your page. Make sure it has devices permission. The third one would be the frequency plan ID. So you, here you need to select the frequency ID of the exported device. You can check the frequencies documentation for this. Let me help you navigate there. Here is the list of frequency plans available. For example, if you need to use US915 FSB1, here is the ID you need to use. For now, I will be using the EU frequency plan. The configuration is complete. The next step would be to export the device details. You need to insert the device ID from the console. You can also use a dry run flag to verify that the result is as expected. The dry run flag does everything except clearing out the session keys and the root keys. For now, I will be storing these details into a demo file. If you see, the result is as expected. Now we are good to go with exporting the device. Copying the device ID, inserting it and saving the details to devices.json file. However, the exporting process would be halted if there are any errors. Now, let us check the file. So here are the device details exported into the JSON file. Step 1 is now complete. So as discussed earlier, exporting the device details from V2 would clear off the root keys and session keys by default. Now let us take a look at these details on the V2 console. If you see, the device details are cleared off from the console. So let's recap what we have done till now. 
You need to configure the migrate tool. You need to provide the app ID, access key and the frequency plan ID. Then you can start exporting the device details. Make sure you use the dry run flag before you export the details. Next step is to import the device in V3. Let us take a look at it now. Navigate to V3 console and create an application to import the file. I have created an application already but creating an application is a simple process. You just need to assign an ID and give it a name. For now I will be importing the file into this application. As soon as you go to the application click on import and devices. Select the Thingstack JSON format and select the file to upload. Here is the file that we have generated from step 1. Now click on create and devices. The import is now complete. However, if there are any errors, the import process would be halted. Click on proceed. Now you can see the device listed in your application. In the current release of the stack, the device needs rejoin to road traffic to V3. The further releases wouldn't need the devices to rejoin. However, please note that it is recommended that device rejoin when migrated between the networks. Now that the device is on V3, the next join will be handled by V3. Coming to the migration of the gateways, the process is simple. Let us take a look at it now. You just need to click on add gateway, give the necessary details and select the frequency plan. You can also find the guide to add gateways from the documentation. Click on gateway section and here is the guide on adding gateways. For now, I have an active gateway on V2 console, which is a multi-tech conduit. Let us migrate this gateway to V3. To do so, as, as informed earlier, you need to register the gateway on V3. I have already registered the gateway on V3 console. Now let us configure the gateway to point to the gateway server address of V3. Let me log in into my multitech. Here is the gateway GUI. As you can see, the gateway is currently pointing to TT and V2. In most cases, it is enough that you need to just change the server address. You can copy the server address of V3 from the gateway overview. Submit it. Save and apply the changes. The gateway should be online in a minute. Let's wait. Yes, now you can see the connect gateway in live data. You can also see few of the events of this gateway. The gateway is online, routing the traffic. Now we are good to rejoin the device. I am pressing the reset button now. We should be receiving the join request in a while. The device is now successfully joined. Also you can see the uplinks from this device. You can also take a look at the metadata and the events available on V3. For more information on this, you can refer the documentation. Now let us recap what we have done till now. You need to navigate to the desired application on V3, choose to import end devices using the Thingstack JSON format and upload the file generated from step 1. If there are no errors, you should be successfully seeing the devices listed in your V3 application. Next to that, you check the coverage of your uh, vicinity and the devices should rejoin on V3. Here is some additional information. Migration procedure does not include payload formatters. 
But migrating the payload formatters from V2 to V3 is pretty straightforward. You can uh, take a look at the payload formatters documentation. Let us take a look now. Search for payload formatters. You can go through the various types of payload formatters supported by the thing stack over here. Let us get back. Also, you can export a specific list of devices from an application or all the devices associated with an application at once. The commands for the same are available in the readme file. Here are the commands to export devices from a list or export all the devices associated with an application. The LoRaWAN stack migrate tool also supports migration from other network servers like tube stack or private TTI networks. Also, pairing between TTN v2 and TTN v3 is enabled, which means gateways pointing to TTN v2 can route traffic from your devices registered on TTN v3 via packet broker. For more information on packet broker and pairing, please refer to the documentation. That is all for the demonstration today. Let us know your queries if any in the chat. Thank you for your time and being part of this amazing community. Have a happy conference. Let us build this thing bigger, better and stronger.